Let's talk about some of the individual fighters you've got in your stable at the moment. Starting with Ryan Burnett, who we, we thought we were going to see today, but unfortunately he's got some pressing issues he needs to take care of. Unfortunately for us, not for him. Um, what I wanted to ask first of all, what areas has he improved in the most since you guys started working together? And also, what areas do you still feel he needs to improve in? Well, I'm not going to answer the second part of that question, right? I thought you might not. He had four fights and hadn't boxed for a year when he came to me. And he's now had 19 fights. And had been living in a Jeep and had a battle with the board to get his brain scan approved. Okay, we're not just living in a Jeep. I think he was homeless. He was eating leftover food, living in a car with his dad, not a penny to his name. Not a fight in the last year and not a fight in sight. Um, and, and in the space of three years, he's gone from that to having 15 fights, winning the IBF Bantamweight title, winning the WBA Bantamweight title, defending against his WBA mandatory, and now entering into the, ult the ultimate type of competition in the World Boxing Super Series. He just bought his first house with no mortgage and he owns a car. How that he doesn't sleep in. <laughs> right, yeah, that he stays awake in. So how, as a man and as a fighter, his ascension and his development in life, bearing in mind he's 25 years old now, has been as sharp and as drastic as I have seen. And to have had an involvement in that and to have been an important part of that is very satisfying, very satisfying indeed. And to answer the original question, which I'm afraid you haven't, what has improved, what has improved the most about him during your time together? In, from a boxing standpoint, what attributes would you say you've seen the most improvement in? Well, I hadn't finished my answer. That was Sorry, I rudely interrupted you, I apologise. As a fighter, I believe he's improved in every element. His, his understanding of what he is as a person and as a fighter, and how to make that work from him fights using his strengths whilst behind the scenes we keep working on the things that are his weaknesses so that if the fight comes along where he's put into a position where he has to use elements of his game that he hasn't been proficient in he's got that in his bag and it's always always all about adding tools to the bag and keep an eye on the kids behind me make sure they're working let me ask you one more question on Burnett before we move on to some of your other fighters. Nanito Donaire is obviously up next in the first fight in the World Boxing Super Series. We don't have a date or venue yet, although sources tell me that it's going to be in Scotland, perhaps, um, on the same show as Josh Taylor um, in his WBSS opener. But regardless of that, what, what do you make of Donaire? How much can we take from his last performance against Kyle Frampton? People are sleeping on Nanito Donaire. Um, I watched the fight with Carl Frampton live and I've watched it a couple of times since. And Donair was giving Carl a really hard time in the start of the fight. He posed a lot of threat and a lot of danger. Carl's natural strength and size advantage helped him as well as applying some very shrewd tactics in the fight so that he didn't allow Donair to be where he wanted to be because if he had allowed Donaire to be where he wanted to be, like he did in the 11th round, you would have seen a potentially different outcome. And Carl, Carl actually ended up going up close to him and using his strength and his, and his natural size advantage to grab hold of that fight physically as well. Um, now Donaire's going down to his natural weight division. He's a fighter that I have used as an example to some of my fighters when it comes to how to use your legs and balance when you fire heavy shots. So I know what Donito Donair is. I've admired him, I've watched him, and I've used him as an educational tool for my fighters in the past. And I still believe that that Donito Donair still exists because his brain still works and, and he as a fighter and a per, as a person exists in that brain. So we have to assume that he's gonna turn up as motivated as he ever has been because now he understands what it's like to be a, tra uh, a champion. And he's gonna to wanna to aspire to be that again. He can still perform and he's got the bit between his teeth and he'll see Ryan as a, com a competent champion but without the experience that he has. And, and that's why, as, as strange as this may sound, 
That's why Ryan wanted to fight him, and I agree with it, because he wanted the bigger challenge there, because the bigger challenge is going to make Ryan raise his game and become the fighter that he potentially can be. And, and I'm looking forward to it because like even, even, in, even in the opening few sessions with Ryan, I can see that his focus is where it needs to be. And that's how, that's how you're going to get the best out of a fighter, is to put them in situations where they have to do what they normally can't get away with.